once you get that blood pressure cuff around your arm and someone says your blood pressure is high, it's incumbent upon you to keep going back and, and letting a doctor take the blood pressure and let him decide, or with you, decide when to give you drugs. But the author of Control Your High Blood Pressure Without Drugs thinks that kind of talk is scaring people into doing nothing. I see a lot of dropouts here. I see a lot of people that are sick of being sick, sick of taking pills, sick of going to doctors and want to find something else. And this is what we have here, is something else. I teach people to take their own blood pressure at home, and I teach them to be responsible and to understand what they're doing that makes the blood pressure go up and then they can learn to not do that, and then they can learn to get off the pills. Geraldine Miner is getting off her pills, eliminating a host of painful side effects, and with the help of biofeedback, exercise, and a low-fat, low-salt diet, her blood pressure has dropped from a high of 190 over 110 to 128 over 78 the last time it was taken. My regular doctor just couldn't believe it, and he had to take it three times. But Dr. Morton Maxwell, for one, remains skeptical. Reducing salt in the diet or exercising may work in an individual patient, but it only works in the minority of patients with high blood pressure, and in any individual patient, it is unpredictable. The debate over treatments for high blood pressure is sure to continue, and not only in California. Brian Jenkins, CNN, Los Angeles. Stay tuned. The news continues. Now, home communications is made simpler because QT&T put a telephone answering machine, a hands-free speakerphone, and a solid-state push-button telephone into the QT&T answer phone. The pre-recorded message lets you screen incoming calls. Hello, sorry you're not in. Have I got a deal for you? This is Premier Aluminum Siding. And the machine records and stores up to 60 messages. Answer phone is a hands-free duplex speakerphone. Just push the talk button and carry on a simultaneous conversation from anywhere in the room. The recall button lets you redial busy numbers automatically, and the speaker lets you hear when someone answers. Push the mute button, and the party on the other end can't hear. It's for you. Are you here? I'm not here. I'm sorry, he's not here. Answer phone's push button dialing system is pulse tone switchable. That means you can use it on all long-distance phone services, no matter which phone system is in your home or office. So, home communications is made simpler. The QT&T Answer Phone is the home communications center that helps you never miss important phone calls, gives you privacy and security when you want it, and lets your family talk and listen together on one telephone. To buy all these components separately could easily cost over $300. QT&T suggested retail price $139.95, but wait! You can buy the QT&T answer phone direct from Urban General for only $79.95. And you can still take advantage of QT&T's optional six-year warranty. No other phone company offers that. Here's how to order your answer phone today. Use your credit card for rush delivery by calling 1-800-257-1333. That's 1-800-257-1333. Or send check or money order for $79.95 plus $5 shipping and handling to answer phone Box 8660, Atlanta, Georgia. That's answer phone, Box 8660, Atlanta, Georgia. It's 19 minutes after the hour. Here's headline sports. I'm Phil Van Horn, headline sports. The NBA titleists of two years ago flashing that championship form again. Philadelphia swept past Milwaukee in the second round of the NBA playoffs to advance to the semifinals with a win 121-112. Moses Malone led the way, come from behind victory, 31 points. Boston and the Pistons now squared two games all. Benny Johnson scored 22 of his game-high 34 points in the fourth quarter. The Piston victory, a rally to win 102-99. Western Conference, Portland staved off elimination, beat the Lakers 112-107. Clyde Drexler led the way with 15 points, 7 rebounds, and 10 assists. In Game 4, Denver at Utah. Later on tonight, Nuggets lead two games to one. In baseball, Rick Mailer of the Atlanta Braves 
stretched his unbeaten streak to seven games without a loss, by far best in the majors. Braves beat Montreal 6-1. Dwight Gooden fan nine. The Mets win at Cincinnati 3-2. Same score, Pittsburgh over the Dodgers. Houston beat the Phils 4-3. Giants shut down St. Louis 5-0. Padres and Cubs suspended in the sixth because of darkness at Wrigley. American League Tigers beat the White Sox 4-3. Texas on top the Tribe 7-2. New York won the fourth straight. Yankees beat Kansas City 6-2. Baltimore battered the Twins 10-5. California over the Brewers 5-1. Oakland over the Red Sox 6-3. Mariners top Toronto 4-1. NASCAR, Bill Elliott won the Winston 500 at Talladega, Alabama. The fastest NASCAR race ever. His speed, an average of over 186 miles an hour. Kyle Petty finished second. NHL playoffs, semifinal round. Philadelphia and Quebec skated through two scoreless periods of hockey. It's now tied at one in the third. Phil Van Horn, Headline Sports. to web and here's who's news prince charles and princess diana were reunited with their children today in venice the royal couple have been separated from the children since they began their tour of italy two and a half weeks ago prince william gave the crowd a two-handed version of the wave which happens to be the very italian way of saying ciao designer calvin klein is out with his fall sportswear collection he says the idea of this collection is to show women how sports clothes can work from day to evening one could be just as dressed in a, in a, in a black wool jersey turtleneck and, and pants with a, a beautiful Barry Kisselstein jewel belt. Or, or for day, in a, and to me it's the newest, is a, is, a, is a plaid jacket. I'm Glenda Webb, CNN. In the headlines, President Reagan made his controversial visit to the German military cemetery at Bitburg today. Several hundred demonstrators marched through the streets of the city to protest the 10-minute stop. Earlier, Mr. Reagan went to the site of the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp where he vowed the world will never forget the horror of the Holocaust. Tomorrow, the president heads to Spain where today 75,000 demonstrators marched through the streets of Madrid shouting Reagan out and Yankee go home. And new government statistics show about 6 million Americans were the victims of violent crime each year between 1978 and 1982. Those numbers show the poor are at high risk of becoming victims. With the headlines, I'm Alex Marino. More news after this. Franklin Library proudly confounds the experts with a revolution in publishing. Goethe, Hardy, Hawthorne, 50 of the world's great books in a remarkable collector's edition are yours for... $30. $35. $35. No, for only $12.50 each. Less than the cost of many ordinary hardcover books. Each masterpiece individually designed, fully bound with hubbed spine, handsome end papers, gilded edges, superb illustrations, fine milled paper to last for generations. $12.50 each. Simply call 1-800-453-6100. Franklin Library will send you each month another volume of the Collector's Library, each only $12.50. Order by credit card or pay COD with a dollar service charge. You may return any book for any reason within 30 days. The fine library of your dreams is only one phone call away. Call 1-800-453-6100. In business news, the firm in Hollywood that produces the Jane Fonda workout series sees the sky as the only limit for home videos. Sandy Kenyon reports. Most successful firms are built on sweat, but usually it's the sweat of the employees, not of the customers. That's not true at Carl Lorimar Home Video. The company produces the very successful Jane Fonda workout series. Just under one million copies of the original workout tape have been sold since it was released in 1982. Fonda's Prime Time Workout and Workout Challenge have each sold more than 100,000 copies. A tape is considered a hit if it sells just half that. The idea, says Stuart Carl, is to make a product that sells consistently. 
rather than follow the boom and bust pattern of feature film releases. You know, basically that we're in the business of creating original programming that I believe it's video publishing. If you look at a bookstore, you know, 10% is bestsellers and the other 90% is alternative stuff. Jane Fonda is Stuart Carl's best but not only seller. He's also produced a series of other exercise tapes, celebrity <laughs> profiles of John Lennon and Marilyn Monroe, and instructional tapes ranging from nutrition to self-defense. Late last year, Carl was bought out by Lorimar Productions. They will produce video versions of their television shows and feature films for the label. But Carl insists Lorimar won't change his philosophy, that videotape has a potential far beyond feature films. Everything from campaign, you know, messages from politicians to new original books to, you know, how to cook and, and, and work. I, I see it as, you know, you'll be getting magazines on video. And Stuart Carl clearly so hopes to publish like them. Sandy Kenyon, CNN, Hollywood. Sunny skies are in tomorrow's forecast for the Plain States and the Southern Atlantic coastal states. Scattered showers and thunderstorms from Colorado to Missouri. Rain from the upper Ohio Valley through New England. Highs reaching only the upper 40s and low 50s over northern New England in the 80s from the Southern Plains to the Southern Atlantic coast. An upcoming movie about boxing champ Ray Mancini fails to include any reference to the fight in which Mancini's blows resulted in the death of a Korean fighter. Lauren Sidney asked why. Ray Mancini has had a storybook boxing career that earned him a world championship title in 1982. The 23-year-old has made more than $6 million to date. Heart of a Champion, the Ray Mancini story, focuses on Ray and his father Lenny, a former boxer who tried to discourage him from a life in the ring. Uh, I don't want to see you do that. I said, I know, what I, I know what I had to go through, and I don't want to see you go through that. But I told him, you know, I want to do it for him. That boxing was good enough for you. Why isn't it good enough for me? Hey, in them days, things was different. Mancini has come under criticism for ending the movie before his infamous fight with Korean fighter Dooku Kim. Kim died from injuries suffered in that match. Mancini says he left it out because... First of all, that's all the story was supposed to be about, is me winning, why I wanted to win the title for my father. Nothing after that. And second of all, the deal was made before any other fight. The movie ends right at me winning the title. That is the climax, that is the finish. Dr. Doug McKeon, who plays Mancini, agrees that the Kim fight is part of another story. Still, he's not sure whether boxing is a game whose time has passed. I started to wonder, you know, things that were happening in the ring, the deaths and everything. Um, you know, should it be banned? I don't think it, the sport ever will be, you know, the money that's involved in the sport right now and uh, the many fans that, that boxing has. So I'm split. Lauren Sidney, CNN, New York. I'm Dan Hackle. Around the world every half hour, this is Headline News. Monday, she was the girl next door that every guy hoped for. Every guy except Don. Don Baker, blind as a bat. I thought you were a peeping Tom. Goldie Hawn and Edward Albert in Butterflies Are Free on Superstation WTBS. Brought to you with limited commercial interruption by Bristol Myers. Monday. and driving can kill a friendship. From Turner Broadcasting System, this is Headline News. You come face to face with our romantic past and eye to eye with our robotic future. You witness the renaissance of an Italian hill town, stroll a booming Texas campus, visit the Queen's merchants in London, explore the Mexican forest for monarch butterflies winter. You meet a bully president, brave volunteer firefighters, the daring acrobats of old Japan and the amazing mules of the New South. You discover a whole world in just this one issue of Smithsonian Magazine. And now you can get 12 monthly issues of this remarkable magazine for only $18. Plus, you become an associate member of the Smithsonian Institution, eligible for travel benefits, book, and gift discounts. Nature, art, science, history. Every month, a whole world. There is no other magazine like Smithsonian. To get the next 12 issues of Smithsonian Magazine for only $18, call toll-free 800-257-1333. That's 800-257-1333. Call now.
Whole new worlds are waiting for you. Headline News. I'm Dan Hackle. A massive anti-American rally in Spain. Some 75,000 people marched through Madrid today, shouting anti-American slogans and burning effigies of President Reagan. The protesters are demanding that Spain withdraw from the NATO alliance. The rally comes one day before Mr. Reagan arrives for a state visit. The president's still in West Germany, where he visited the Bitburg Military Cemetery earlier today. Mr. Reagan laid a wreath at the cemetery in a solemn ten-minute ceremony. He and West German Chancellor Helmut Kohl also visited the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp to offset criticism over the Bitburg visit. Frank Sesno reports. The problem from the beginning was how to deal with the horrors of the past. Horrors committed by one of America's staunchest present-day allies. Chancellor Kohl was committed to a powerful display of reconciliation at Bitburg, but President Reagan was forced to confront the past at Bergen-Belsen. A Jewish memorial there screams out, Earth conceal not the blood shed on thee. It's a legacy of evil with which the president has been struggling. Yes, out of this sickness, as crushing and cruel as it was, there was hope for the world as well as for the world to come. Out of the ashes, hope, and from all the pain, promise. At Bitburg came the climactic moment, as the leaders, flanked by retired generals, enemies in the war, reached across the graves of German soldiers in a gesture of reconciliation. There were no speeches at Bitburg, but later, at the nearby U.S. Air Base, U.S. and German soldiers and civilians listened, as President Reagan and Chancellor Kohl sought to explain. Some old wounds have been reopened, and this I regret very much, because this should be a time of healing. This march with um, President Reagan across the soldiers' uh, tombs of Bitburg was not a very easy step and a very easy, easy march for us to take. Among many, it has and it had to evoke very deep emotions. With the lessons of the past firmly in our minds, we've turned a new, brighter page in history. To mark that brighter page, the leaders and their wives paid a surprise visit earlier to the grave of Konrad Adenauer, the father of post-war Germany. That was the type of symbolic gesture many of the president's critics say he should have opted for from the very beginning. But after an emotional day of remembering, the president was thrust back into the present. At a state dinner, he celebrated what he had hoped would be the focus of this trip, German-American friendship. The Bitburg visit is finally over, but the difficulties in reconciling the present with the past surely are not. As Chancellor Kohl himself said, reconciliation doesn't forget the past, but tries to overcome the past. Frank says no, CNN, with the president in Bonn. Pockets of demonstrators greeted Mr. Reagan's motorcade through the narrow streets of Bitburg today. Many of them shouted support for the president's visit. About 20 minutes before the president arrived, 25 riot-equipped German police charged into a group of 200 Jewish protesters and their supporters. The scuffle lasted about five minutes. There were no arrests. In New York City, some 250,000 people marched to show their solidarity with Soviet Jews. But many of the participants lashed out at President Reagan for his visit to Bitburg Cemetery. Mayor Ed Koch said what the Soviet Union had done to its Jews rivaled Nazi Germany. In Los Angeles, some 500 Jews held a cemetery vigil today. Gloria Hillard reports. Wearing yellow armbands, some yellow stars, they marched. Hundreds of them pass a sea of graves, the tombstones of the war dead of 40 years ago. They gathered, the Jewish young and old, to stand with soldiers of World War II in a moment of remembrance. And it was in those ovens where the ashes of our people were created and eventually spread. And protest. That the president would lay a wreath at Bitburg has understandably outraged not just Holocaust, not just veterans throughout our country, and has opened the wounds of thousands of Holocaust survivors throughout the world. And while they stood in silent vigil of those who lost their lives on the battleground in the camps, the words spoken by President Reagan at a ceremony on German soil that we should never forget was echoed by those who cannot, the victims. Never forget. And if we'll never forget, hopefully it will never happen again. And the veterans. The atrocities that were committed 
the, the murder of the American veterans at Malmody. Those all things will remain with us for, for all time. And while thousands of miles away, a promise was kept. In a cemetery in Los Angeles, there was a feeling that one had been broken. Gloria Hillard, CNN, Los Angeles. The official Soviet media kept up a steady stream of outrage commentary today following President Reagan's Pittsburgh visit. The Novosti News Agency called the action an insult to mankind, especially to those who fought against Nazism and died doing so. The TASS agency called the visit an appalling sacrilege. TASS said the visit was an attempt to shift the blame for Nazi atrocities onto the victims of Nazism. The Soviets admitted today they're doing military research in space, but they deny it is a space-based anti-missile system. Meet Jorgensen reports from Moscow. The defense minister of the Soviet Union admitted Sunday the USSR is conducting military research in outer space. But the minister said the Soviet Union is not creating space strike weapons or anti-missile defense systems. Marshal Sergei Sokolov repeatedly slammed the United States in an interview with the Soviet news agency TASS. The interview appeared on the front page of the Army newspaper, Krasnaya Zvezda. The marshal charged the Reagan administration with trying to acquire nuclear first strike capability through a space-based defense system. The Soviet Union will have no other choice than to take reply measures if the United States militarizes space, said Sokolov. Our measures will be adequate to the threat that might be created to the Soviet Union and its allies. The Soviet Union claims a balance exists in nuclear forces between the two superpowers. And Sokolov said a so-called Star Wars system would upset that balance and might make reduction of nuclear armaments impossible. It was the 73-year-old Sokolov's first major public statement since being named an alternate non-voting member of the Soviet Union's ruling Politburo last month. Meet Jorgensen, CNN, Moscow. It was 20 years ago that the first U.S. Army combat troops were sent into the Vietnam War. Some 600 veterans today held a wreath-laying ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery to mark the anniversary. They recall the early days of the war and mourn some 1,500 Americans killed. We are offered different ways to choose life and to heed God's call. Each individual that we honor today responded to that call. And these are the people that we should be honoring as we remember this war. Around the world, around the clock, this is Headline News. See you, kid. Get well soon. You know, when a friend or loved one is hospitalized, it can be scary. And today's sky-high health care costs could make matters even worse, especially since Medicare pays less than half of your average hospital bill. In fact, Medicare is in-hospital deductible and co-payments. Those are the costs you pay out of your own pocket. They've been raised every single year since 1968. The Part A deductible that started at $40 is now $400. And you could pay that for just one day in the hospital. And all the other expenses you'd face during a long hospital stay could easily cost you thousands of dollars, even with Medicare. But I have a solution. So jot down this toll-free number while I tell you about it. It's the Medicare Insurance Supplement from Union Fidelity Life Insurance Company. This insurance plan matches Medicare's eligible hospital deductible and co-payments dollar for dollar right now and every time they go up. I'm sold on it because it pays benefits direct to you, not the doctor or the hospital, unless that's what you want. And it pays regardless of Medicare or your other insurance. And what's more, if you're 65 or over, you can't be turned down for any reason. And best of all, this coverage is yours at money-saving rates. So help protect yourself against the costs Medicare leaves you to pay. Call this toll-free number to receive a free information kit that clearly explains it all. And there is no obligation whatsoever. Now don't wait until it's too late. Get the peace of mind you deserve. Call today. Take Danny Thomas's advice and call for this important information today. 
Call toll-free 1-800-257-1333. That's 1-800-257-1333. Or write to Medicare Supplement, Post Office Box 8660, Atlanta, Georgia 30306. Operators are standing by now. He's a cabinet secretary with an instinct for the controversial in an agency the White House wants dismantled. Francis Harden reports on Education Secretary William Bennett's first three months in office. During commencement ceremonies, George Washington University added an honorary doctorate of humanities to the many laurels of William Bennett. The education secretary is both a lawyer and a philosopher by training. But his critics say the advanced degrees haven't helped his aim, that he keeps shooting himself in the foot. It started at his first press conference as he discussed a proposal to limit college student loans to $8,000. It may require less sacrifice. It may require for some students divestiture of certain sorts, stereo divestiture, uh, automobile divestiture, um, uh, three weeks at the beach divestiture. I do not mean to suggest this will be the case in all circumstances, but it will, it will, like the rain, fall on the just and unjust alike. The policies Bennett advocates are not new to this administration. What's different, says Robert Atwell, is the confrontational style. He represents an administration which wants to uh, reduce substantially, I would say, uh, completely eliminate uh, the federal role. And so he gives a lot more than a perfunctory defense of the outrageous policies of the administration. He moves on onto the offense. Some educators who are otherwise critical of Bennett say they are actually grateful to him for keeping the issue of education reform alive. But other voices on Capitol Hill say that his first three months in office have been so controversial that Bennett may not be able to accomplish anything as Secretary of Education. Francis Harden, CNN, Washington. Challenger's astronauts are preparing to fire the space shuttle out of orbit for a return to Earth Monday on an end to their week-long mission. The shuttle is expected to land shortly after noon Eastern time at Edwards Air Force Base in California's Mojave Desert. During their final day in orbit, the seven-man crew got in some last-minute research and packed for the return home. Halley's Comet, likely to be visible to the naked eye later this year, has already been viewed through a few high-powered telescopes. Jeff Flock reports on one of them. 400 million miles away, it looks like an insignificant smudge on the television screen. But for astronomers who have waited a lifetime, their first glimpse of Halley's Comet so, uh, lights up their own personal sky. What scientists are interested in comets for is that they hold in them clues to the origin and evolution of the solar system. Yeah, it's, you see, the focus doesn't look that good. Wyckoff and fellow astronomer Mark Wagner spend hours computer calibrating the telescope's six mirrors for best viewing. But their main interest is not what they see with their eyes. They are collecting and analyzing the comet's light, a technique called spectroscopy. And this is the blue end of the spectrum. In fact, this is almost down into the ultraviolet here. And this is out into the, to the red. The spectrum is a kind of celestial fingerprint that tells scientists what the comet is made of. Halley's Comet is nothing more than a dusty snowball left over from the formation of our solar system four and a half billion years ago. Every 76 years, it is directed in toward the sun, and the outside of the comet melts. It is the steam we see here on Earth. It's a once-in-a-lifetime shot at finding out how our solar system was formed. Come November or December of this year, and probably in January and again in March of 1986, the public will be able to see Halley's Comet, and at that time, it may also have developed a tail that they'll be able to see. I'm Jeff Flock, CNN Space Watch, Mount Hopkins, Arizona. Two congressmen say defense contractors bill the taxpayers for spurious items because they won't be penalized if caught. The lawmakers who are investigating contractor billing practices say the Pentagon receives tens of thousands of bills monthly. They say auditors are years behind in trying to review the records. The Ablo Canyon nuclear power plant moved one step closer to full production today. Officials say the Unit 1 reactor began operating at 20% of capacity. They hope to have it operating at full power sometime this week. A federal court has ordered a rehearing into safety issues surrounding the Diablo power plant. A national wildlife refuge in western Kentucky is being threatened by the Reagan administration's proposed budget cuts. Jeanette Ledford recently visited the area. She has this report. Land between the lakes, 
a haven for wildlife, a national recreation area surrounded by 300 miles of shoreline. For two decades, this part of Kentucky has been preserved, only for the animals and birds and those who want to spend time here. All that could change in a matter of months. Well, Stockman has redlined land between the lakes. By redlining land between the lakes to zero, conceivably it would mean, as there will be no funding for land between the lakes, that all operations will stop October the 1st. While land between the lakes has been a haven for outdoor lovers ever since President Kennedy designated federal money to manage it, more importantly, it's been a refuge for the thousands of animals and birds that live here in an environment that's protected. Condos, fences, hotels, and tennis clubs are unimaginable. But if the proposed federal budget cuts do take place, land between the lakes and the home of these animals will end up as merely a name on a list, the federal surplus property list. Well, what that means is that anybody who is a developer or a speculator from the private sector could come in and buy different parcels of land and develop it. Uh, this would be extremely harmful to the wildlife that we have here. While most people in the country are concerned about the cost of government spending, people here at Land Between the Lakes are more concerned about the cost of bringing down the deficit. To them, it means the end to the lives of thousands of animals, an end to environmental education, an end even to their jobs. What has been a sanctuary for both people and animals could become nothing more than open season for commercialization. Trinette Ledford, CNN, Land Between the Lakes, Kentucky. Stay tuned. The news continues. Are you ready for the major tax revisions in 85? Changes that can dramatically affect your pocketbook, your lifestyle, your future? Take action now and profit by preparing for those big tax changes. Now more than ever, you need the Kiplinger Washington letter to move ahead in profit. Kiplinger editors have dug deep for inside, not yet released information from the highest levels in Washington. And they're revealing their important and surprising findings in current issues of the Kiplinger Washington letter. What's more, they're offering readers insightful predictions on interest rates and inflation with unhedged forecasts. Kiplinger editors talk to leaders of business, banking, retailing, and government. They ask the questions you want answers to. Nobody has the time personally to read and digest all the material necessary to cope with today's complex, ever-changing scene. That's why you should stay with the smart people, the decision makers, who count on the Kiplinger Washington letter. Today more than ever, you need this letter to move ahead in profit. That's why you should try this introductory offer to the Kiplinger Letter for six months, 26 weekly issues, for only $15, and get free a special Kiplinger report on the top opportunities, the most pay, the best lifestyle for the rest of the 80s. It's yours free when you try the Washington Letter for six months, 26 weekly issues. And that's not all. When you phone today, you'll also get another Kiplinger analytical report on what to look for in the next few years, right through to the year 2000, a forecast on how you can profit most, which kinds of business will do best, where to find the highest returns with the lowest risk, money market funds, stocks, bonds, a checklist of things you should look for, sound down-to-earth judgment and advice. Smart people, decision makers, count on the Kiplinger Washington letter. They say they can't do without it, so don't miss out. Call 800-922-5100. If you don't make or save many times the $15, you keep these two valuable reports on the best careers for the rest of the 80s and how you can profit from now to the year 2000 will refund the unused portion of your subscription. Isn't that fair enough? This could be the wisest investment you'll ever make. So take advantage today. Call 800-922-5100. It's 49 minutes after the hour. Here's the latest from Headline Sports. I'm Tom Kirkland, Headline Sports. A busy first Sunday in May, NBA playoff matinees in Philadelphia. The 76ers eliminated Milwaukee in four straight, taking game four 121-112, using a fourth quarter surge and 31 Moses Malone points to move into the East Finals. They'll have to wait around a while, because in Detroit, the Pistons evened up the other East semifinal. 
rallying from 11 points back in the fourth quarter to beat Boston 102-99. Vinnie Johnson, the Pistons' spark plug, 22 of his game-high 34 points coming down in the fourth quarter. In Portland, the Trail Blazers hanging on, beat L.A. 115-107 Sunday afternoon. Clyde Drexler's 15 points, 10 assists, and 7 rebounds led the way for Portland. Six teammates in double figures. Lakers still up three games to one, however. And game four of the other Western Conference semifinal underway. Second quarter, Denver leading Utah 36-26. NHL playoff activity at the Colisee in Quebec City. The Nordiques hosting Philadelphia in game one of the Stanley Cup semifinals. They are tied at one, playing in overtime. Baseball action in the American League. Eastern Division leading Baltimore made it nine wins in their last 11 games, whipping up on Minnesota 10-5. Red Hot Cal Ripken had five hits and four RBI. Mike Boddicker is now 4-1. On the scoreboard, Detroit better than Chicago, 4-3. Texas top Cleveland, 7-2. Yankees made it four straight for Billy Martin, 6-2 over Kansas City. California beat Milwaukee, 5-1. Oakland doubled Boston, 6-3. And Seattle got by Toronto, 4-1. In the National League, Rick Mailer's now 7-0. His Atlanta Braves moved Montreal aside, 6-1. Mailer, the only Atlanta starter with the win so far. On the scoreboard, the Mets beat the Reds, 3-2. Giants shut out the cards, 5-0. Cubs leading the Padres, 4-2 in the sixth. Game suspended by darkness. Pittsburgh beat L.A. 3-2, and Houston slipped past Philadelphia 4-3. Bill Elliott takes his fourth NASCAR title, winning the Winston 500, averaging a record 186.288 miles per hour. I'm Tom Kirkland, Headline Sports. I'm Lynn Wan, and here's what's hot. Tina Marie. She's been singing for seven years, but her unique music zoomed onto the charts after her video Lover Girl made it on MTV. She's called a rhythm and blues artist, but Tina says she doesn't like labels. I didn't get in the music business to cross over or to do this or to do that. You know, I got in the music business because I love music and um, to make people happy. Actress Jane Fonda wasn't happy to learn her old high school now allows smoking. She was in New York recently to attend her 30th reunion at the all-girls school. It is not the run for the roses, but a roll down the street for these bed racers. It is the eighth annual bed race in Birmingham, Alabama. Seven teams threw three sheets to the wind in the runoff. I'm Lynn Vaughn, CNN. In the headlines, President Reagan made his controversial visit to the German military cemetery at Bitburg today. Several hundred demonstrators marched through the streets of the city to protest the 10-minute stop. Earlier, Mr. Reagan went to the site of the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp where he vowed the world will never forget the horror of the Holocaust. Tomorrow, the president heads to Spain where today 75,000 demonstrators marched through the streets of Madrid shouting Reagan out and Yankee go home. And new government statistics show about 6 million Americans were the victims of violent crime each year between 1978 and 1982. Those numbers show the poor are at high risk of becoming victims. With the headlines, I'm Alex Marino. More news after this. If you find taxes taxing, in place of the family dog, we suggest the family cat, Dreyfus Tax-Exempt Funds. Once you had to be rich to afford tax-exempt investments, then in 76, Dreyfus pioneered the Dreyfus Tax-Exempt Bond Fund to pass along tax-exempt income to all investors. All income from this high-yield municipal bond fund is now 100% free of federal tax. And it's not just for the few, it's for you. At every tax bracket, from only 25% up, the tax-exempt bond fund yield today means more money after taxes than long-term U.S. government bonds. There's no sales charge, no redemption penalty, ready liquidity. Your money is yours. Call 1-800-523-7600. We'll send you this chart, tax-free information, and a prospectus. No obligation. Call 1-800-523-7600. He's waiting. In business news, a House subcommittee report is blaming a shortage of customs agents for billions of dollars in counterfeit products that enter the U.S. each year. Andrea Fleischer reports. Four billion dollars worth of counterfeit goods flood the U.S. market each year. Products include phony transistors that were to be used in a test of the U.S. space shuttle, counterfeit birth control pills, auto parts, 
and blue jeans. Since 1982, thousands of fake Apple computers have been fraudulently sold to unassuming consumers. The consequences of this are uh, uh, that something like 600,000 jobs are lost, uh, that huge amounts of tax revenues are lost, and that, the, and that the U.S. competitiveness is affected adversely. For two years, Congressman John Dingell's Subcommittee on Investigations has been studying the impact of counterfeit goods on the U.S. economy. A just-released report by the committee blames the problem on too few customs agents and ineffective enforcement of U.S. trade laws. They are not enforcing the law according to its terms, they're not collecting the money, and they are not engaged in the kind of practice that, that has our diplomatic service abroad tell these other governments that we will not tolerate this kind of behavior by their nationals. The report charges U.S. trading partners with smuggling, undervaluing merchandise, espionage, and false declaration of goods to avoid charges of dumping. As a solution to the growing problem of counterfeit goods, the report recommends more vigorous prosecution of counterfeit cases by the U.S. Attorney's Office, a ban on products manufactured by firms convicted of criminal violations, tougher enforcement of U.S. trade laws, and the hiring of 800 new customs agents. The Reagan administration has proposed cutting the budget of the U.S. Customs Service. According to a spokesman with the agency, the department is doing just fine with the number of agents it has now. Andrea Fleischer, CNN, Washington. Turning to tomorrow's weather, showers and thunderstorms will be scattered from Colorado to Missouri. There will also be showers from the upper Ohio Valley through New England along the northern half of the Pacific Coast. Sunny skies should prevail over the northern plains from the southern plains to the southern Atlantic coast. Twelve years and $300,000 later, Dick Walter is ready to set sail in his homemade sailboat. Ron Simons reports it's a dream Walter's had since he was six years old. Dick Walter has made his dream come true, to travel around the world and do it in a boat he built himself. Last summer, the Chandrell was rolled out of his backyard shop into the Columbia River. The 50-foot sailboat took 12 years to build and cost him $300,000. I never had any doubt. Uh, it's just one of the things I'm used to overcoming a lot of problems because that's mostly what this boat represents is problems that have been solved. Walter will be accompanied on the three-year trip by his wife Ingrid and Kirkland, Washington residents Jim and Alice Majid. They paid Walter $20,000 to be a part of his dream. You know, I was born and raised on the river. And every vacation, we always spend on the water. So I think I will be all right. The boat carries a two-month supply of food and makes fresh water. Walter has $30,000 set aside for the trip. What okay. happens when the funds run out isn't a concern. World, that there are some opportunities. They're not always easy to achieve, but they're certainly uh, worthwhile going for. And it's moments like this that, uh, that the great American dream, I guess, comes true. Captain Dick and his crew will spend the next month on Northwest waters, getting everyone accustomed to the boat. The worldwide trip will begin June 8th, when the Chandrelle sets sail for Latin America. Rod Simons for CNN, Pasco, Washington. And that's the news till now. I'm Dan Hackle. Around the world every half hour, this is Headline News. Weeknights, it's the Junkyard Genius. I got a mind full of junk. <laughs> Sanford and Son. Then, boy, the way Glenn Miller played songs that made the hit parade. Boys like us, we had it made. Will you stay for it? Those were the days. All in the family, right after Sanford and Son, 7:05 p.m. Eastern on your superstation weeknights. From Turner Broadcasting System. This is Headline News. Discover time-like books.